How can $11 change your life? Can it be the catalyst to a thriving business? Or maybe it can be put towards the bus ride to the opportunity of a lifetime. Or maybe it's just the precursor to another McDonald's receipt in a growing pile in the back of your second-hand 1998 Toyota Tacoma. Regardless of how we would use this small boon, today, in my 211th video, we'll look at the Archie comic that answers that very question for the good old gang. We open on Veronica shouting at Archie over the phone for some unknown transgression he committed, and the doorbell rings as Archie worriedly debates how he's going to get his smooch on with no scratch. Archie opens the door to my friend Michael, and this well-dressed individual offers an intriguing opportunity. Archie will receive $11 from an anonymous donor by the name of Gosford Wobbledon to use as he pleases under the condition that he never reveals where he got it. $11? Just my luck to get a benefactor on a budget. Archie laments at getting a benefactor on a budget, but attributes the sudden cash to fate, as he needs money to appeal to Veronica. While Archie smells fate, a nearby jughead smells opportunity and attempts to mooch his muchacho. Archie gets away and heads to the mall to do some shopping. He goes to the flower shop only to find he can't afford Jack or his beanstalk and try some other stores. Archie gets similar results at the jewelry store, which makes sense, and the candy store, which he's clearly being lied to. I can find a box of chocolates for $5, and this is 20 years later. Finally, he goes to a bookstore and requests an $11 book, much to the owner's annoyance. Archie blindly checks out the book, as he doesn't want to judge it by its cover, and heads out only to run into Veronica. Archie takes the opportunity to gift her the book, and she opens it to reveal it's completely blank. She gets annoyed and assumes he's telling her to date other men and fill the book with their numbers, which is a really stupid conclusion to come to, and she rushes off, leaving Archie healthier for it. Archie starts screaming at the air and gets picked up by an attractive woman, you can tell by the mole, and goes off to smooch. The comic then ends with a teaser for the next 11 air appearance, which does happen. So. How does the Eleven Airs first story come off? Honestly, not my favorite. We cover Archie getting into a bad relationship with Veronica and him going around town trying to find a gift, but I mean, $11 for a gift is, especially back in 2000 when I believe this story was released, that's, you can find something decent. It was just he's going to the diamond store and the apparently most expensive chocolate in the world store, you know? Uh, it was okay. The uh, resolution was also kind of annoying. Like, Archie was stupid throughout. He's like, I'm not gonna, I'm just gonna randomly decide what book she took it as, oh, I want you to date other guys. And then some girl comes up and is like, hey, let's date. It's an all right story. I'd probably give it three out of five Reggie's. We open on Jughead relaxing on a bench, with Betty approaching him on her jog. She asks about his odd joy, and he claims that he's blissfully broke. Betty doesn't understand, and Jughead uses Mr. Lodge as proof of his anti-capitalistic views. He claims that despite Mr. Lodge using Scrooge McDuck's vault as a bathtub, he looks like a psychologist's wet dream. Betty cracks a sweet joke and leaves Jughead to plan his r slash anti-work post when a familiar figure appears behind him. It's Michael, and he gives Jughead the standard Gosford speech and leaves him with his well-gotten gains. Jughead doubles back on his anti-money moment, and Betty doubles back herself. He begins to tell her of his windfall, but remembers the rules and cuts himself off by stating that he came into some money. Betty misunderstands his intentions and assumes Jughead is transformed into Ming Vasehead after becoming filthy rich. Don't mention it, but Jughead is loaded? 
How many zeros does the zero come into? If you can't be brilliant, it's good to have money. My buddy's finally worth something. He's filthy with the lucre. Duh, has he tried detergent? After the whole town gets the knowledge, they begin hunting him down to pay off his many outstanding debts, thinking this chance may never come again. It's like a science fiction movie where all my friends have been transformed into the lowest form of life. Creditors! Jughead sees his pursuers are blocking off the main roads, and he slips away to Pop Tate's for some juicy burgers, only for Pop to take his money, as Jughead is hopelessly in debt to him as well. Man, I wish tabs were still a thing. The comic ends with the gang accepting their loss and treating Jughead while he revels in his newfound poverty. Now this was a good story. It was fun to see the silliness of the entire town hunting Jughead down, and the theme was well explored in that he was miserable the moment he got a taste of the good life. It's got me intrigued about the rest of the gang's potential usage of this weird but interesting plotline. Unfortunately, that will have to wait until part two of this video, where we look at how Veronica and Reggie handle the Eleven Air. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next week. Like and subscribe, you know the deal. Michael, I'm coming for you.